In this video, we're going to talk about exponential functions. So comparing it to something you already know, you're already familiar with linear functions. We know linear functions have this initial value called b, that's the y-intercept, and they grow by the same amount for every time x goes up by 1. That's the slope, m. With exponential functions, however, instead of growing by the same amount, the y grows by the same percentage every time x goes up by 1. Now, the way I've written this function, b a to the x, the b over here is the initial value, just like with lines. Some instructors uh, switch these, but for me personally, just because b is the initial value for lines, we're used to that. I'm going to use the same notation here. So b is the initial value, but it's growing now by the same percentage instead of the same amount. So let's do an example. Let's say you're told that the population of some town starts at an initial value of 400. There's initially 400 people. And every year, you're growing by 3%. So every year, 3% growth. So first of all, graphically, if we wanted to get a rough sense of what this graph would look like, you'd start when x is 0. You're starting at 400. And now, your y is growing by 3% every time x goes up by 1. Now, notice that it's growing up by the same percentage, but that doesn't mean it's changing by the same amount, right? Because when you're at a higher value, 3% is a larger amount to grow by. That's why the slope keeps increasing as you move from left to right. But how do you actually write the function? If we wanted to, so the cool thing about this is somebody gives you this question, right? You're starting at 400, you're growing by 3% every, uh, every year. I mean, step one, panic. That seems like a difficult question, but that, that actually should take you like 10 seconds to write the answer to that. I'll just write the answer to that first, and then I'll show you how I got it. So using the model b a to the x, the b, the initial value is 400, and the a is, in this case, 1.03, and then to the power of x here. So essentially, how do we get this a? So this b is pretty straightforward. That's just the initial value. So how do you get the a? Well, let's compare it to the m that you're familiar with in lines, slope, right? For slopes, you're growing, uh, if you're growing, it's a positive slope. And if you're decreasing, it's a negative slope. For A, it's about whether it's greater than one or less than one. So if A is greater than one, that's called an exponential growth function. And if A is less than one, that's called an exponential decay function. So specifically, I said that the answer here, if it's 3% growth and the A value is 1.03, how did I get that? Well, specifically, A is essentially one plus the percentage that it's growing by. So in this case, it's 3% growth, right? So A is going to be one plus that 3%. Now, how do you do one plus 3%? I mean, is one plus three just four? So a little cool thing that a lot of people don't know is that this percentage symbol is actually a number. And that number is 0 0.01. So 3% is actually a number on, on old school calculators. If you do three and then the percent symbol, it's going to actually give you 0 0.03 because it's doing three times that number, 0 0.01. So that's so 3% is just 0 0.03. So really one plus 3% is just 1.03. So in either case, our A value, that's how we get that 1.03. And that's how we know that this function is going to be this guy over here, 400 times 1.03 to the X. Now here, what if, we, uh, what if we were told instead that it decreases by 20% every year instead of growing by 3%? Well, it's the same thing, but now because it's decreasing, we're gonna subtract. So now our A is still referencing from one, but now instead of adding to one, you're subtracting from one. And that sort of makes sense. That's why if you subtract from one, it's gonna be less than one, and that's why it's gonna be DK. So anyways, one minus 20%. Well, remember, 20% is just going to be 20 times 0 0.01, which really, once you do that enough, you'll realize that multiplying by 0.01 is just moving the decimal over by 2. So that's just going to be 20 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.20. Move the decimal over by 2. So 1 minus 20% is 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8. So in that case, the answer would have been y equals that initial value, and then a, which is now 0.8, to the x. So that's how you'd get that. So again, comparing these exponential functions, they both have the same initial value, 400, but this one grew, so the a was greater than one. This one's decreasing, so the a is less than one. 
So let's talk just a little bit more about the, the graph of this, right? So the graph of this of any exponential growth function uh, is gonna sort of, it has a, a horizontal asymptote, if you will, which really just means going from the left, it's just coming from zero and it's going up and up and up. And then here, when X is equal to zero, it hits the initial value, that B, and then it's just gonna grow, grow, grow all the way to infinity. If it's exponential decay, well then in that case, it's gonna, come from infinity, right? From the left, it's gonna come from infinity down. And then when X, by the time X is zero, it's at its initial value of B is equal to, uh, of, of B, whatever the, in the previous example, that was 400. And then it's gonna decrease and it's gonna decrease all the way. It's gonna kind of get close, to, close and close to zero, never quite hitting it. Cause it also has a horizontal asymptote. So looking at the exponential functions, you usually have that horizontal asymptote typically just on the x-axis, right? So that, that's how exponential growth and decay functions in general look like. If you think want to think a little bit about why, like where does this come from? In general, if, if I say that something is growing by 3% a year, uh, and if I said, how, what's its value next year? You just multiply it by 1.03, right? In general, new day, new question. If I said you have $300 and it's gonna grow by 3%, what's the new amount? Well, you just multiply it by 1.03, right? That just means growing by 3%. But the year after, if it's also growing by 3%, well, then it's times another 1.03, right? Whatever it was, that, that was now, this was the amount you started with, and then you grew by 3%. So now whatever this number simplifies to is what you have. And then the year after, if it grows by another 3%, you multiply it by another 1.03. So basically you started with the 300 and you're multiplying it by 1.03, x times if you want to see what how much money you have x years later and the way to represent that in math of course multiplying itself by x times is raising that 1.03 the power of x and that's where the b a to the x comes from the initial value the a which is sort of like your growth factor to the power of x so now finally if you're just given a question this is just review now for something you should know if i just told let's say i didn't give you that percentage change right what if instead of telling you that it grew by 3%, I just gave you, suppose you started with $300 this year and next year you had $330, right? And if you wanna now find the a growth rate, all right? So it's like, what percentage did you grow by in that one year? So if in one year you grew by this much, well, this is just, you might, you might remember this from a previous math class, but the definition of percent change is just always the new value minus the old value divided by the old value. And this then gives you the percentage um, as a decimal. So let's do this. So new minus old, that's just the change. The change, the 330 minus 300, that's how much you grew by over the original amount that you started with 300. That's gonna be, you grew by $30 over 300. So that's just gonna be 110, so 0.10. So it's not 0.10%, but rather remember, if you want to write this as using the percentage symbol, 0.10 is the same as 10%. So if a question said that you suppose you start with 300 and your exponential growth and next year you're 330, well, all of a sudden, you know your initial value if you're starting at 300, so your B is 300. And now you figured out that this change was 10%. And if it's always going to be 10% change, then your A is going to be one plus that. So one plus the 10%, 0 0.1 is 1.1, and then to the X like this. So that would be your final answer.